What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of Seriously Fast Media. I am going to be starting a new segment and it is going to be called Seriously Fast Diecast. For those of you guys who've never heard of it, we'll roll off the Instagram. I, from now on, I think I'm going to start doing a lot more diecast videos to go along with the NASCAR news videos and the NASCAR topics that you guys love to hear and want to hear about. So, without further ado, let's get rolling. So, for those of you guys who do not know and haven't been privy to or haven't really paid attention, just a little update on the Michael McDowell uh, 124th. So... For those of you guys haven't paid attention or don't know, again, or forgot, I ordered the Michael McDowell win within a few days of him winning the Daytona 500. <coughs> Excuse me. I have been waiting for that car for basically a year now, and it should have been delivered in December. I got a notification it was coming to me. It was on its way. Um, didn't really pay too, too much attention to that because, of course, I, I order a lot of die casts. And it came and said it was delivered. So I get home and it, it wasn't there. I'm like, okay, weird. Maybe it's in the basement, blah, blah, blah. Go downstairs, check the basement, wasn't there. Um, so I'm like, oh, you know what happened? Crap, 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 crap. So I ended up realizing that it went to my old address. Looked it up on Lionel's website, went to my old address, and... I went straight over there a couple days later. Get there. The guy says, yeah, you got the package. I sent it back. I asked the guy for all my mail. He ended up uh, technically at that point committing mail fraud. Uh, held my mail from me. I hit, showed him ID, everything else. Uh, I assume the guy kept it, um, threw it away, gave it to somebody, sold it, blah, 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 blah. Don't know. But he says he, he sent it back. So I go to call Lionel. They were closed over the whole holiday weekend. My fiance had COVID. I was very sick. We went back and forth. I ended up calling Lionel, got a hold of them last week. And she said, no, that was never sent back. If you ever want to check it again, go to your, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, shipping tracking number. So I did it. Go to my tracking number, boom, boom, boom. Never sent back. So I, um, I am now out of basically the equivalency, almost 70 bucks. Uh, not very happy about that. So I called Lionel. I said, do you guys have any left? She says, yeah, we got some autographed ones. And I got might have one or two more. I want one. Didn't have the cash right then and there because I was off for two weeks. So it was my fiance. And now that I got one, every, time, every place I look for is out, which really sucks. So I'm kind of screwed out on that one. This die cast I got... Friday, so just a few days ago, uh, went into, uh, yeah, went into the, uh, went home, went to, or sorry, got the alert Friday about three o'clock, delivered. Okay, cool. Um, really excited. Went to go pick up my daughter on my way home. I says, hey, babe, I'm on my way home. Uh, I get my die cast, right? No. Nothing? No. Well, when I got home at six o'clock, it wasn't here. Okay, well, that's weird. That sucks. Um, could check again. Maybe it was delivered afterwards. I, so she checks nothing. She said she'd ask her mom who babysits my stepson, but unfortunately her mom left her phone at our house. So I get home and I checked a couple of the uh, places around my house, uh, a couple of the other, a couple of our neighbors drive uh, front porches, Maybe they dropped it off. Maybe they grabbed it on an accident, brought it back to us. Nothing, which really sucks. Really sucks. Um, go in the house. I started getting kind of upset. I was going to call her mom and I'm like, ah, crap, she left the phone. I went in the basement just to check the basement and oh, thank God the box was sitting there. Uh, so without further ado, let's check out this die cast. Time, grab this. This one's really cool. Roush Fenway, R Roush Fenway, 2010 August race, 2010 Pocono win from Greg Biffle. I've had a couple Biffle cars in the past. This is the first one I've actually bought with in full intention to keep. Just noticed this, bought these plastic cases. This one I was keeping for 
uh, Michigan die cast. And I realized when I went and sat in the chair over there, I must have sat on it and broke it. So, sorry, Kyle. But there goes $10 I'll never get back in my life. Any whom. Before I get going in here, I just want to give a huge shout out to my new uh, affiliate program sponsor. And that is uh, NordVPN. So if any of you guys are a little older like me, obviously not you guys are, you know, under 18 really it's not going to be a big thing to you guys but if you guys are like me over 18 concerned about your online privacy online security uh it doesn't matter what side of the political spectrum you are but if you're afraid of the government reading you and telling being able to see what websites you're on what you're looking up getting nervous about any of that uh nordvpn will actually uh, keep that from happening give all kinds of online security and it's very fast too so you guys can get a very, very good deal in the description box below. Just use my link and sign up for it. So, on to the car. Winner, Long Pond, Pennsylvania. Time of race, 3 hours, 46 minutes, 51 seconds. 288 laps. Uh, start position, 12th. Number of leaders, 9. Uh, the driver had 15 career wins at the time. Number of laps led by the winner was 28. Number of cautions... Five for 31 laps. Total laps, 588 miles. Margin of victory, 3.598 seconds. So pretty pretty significant lead there. For those of you guys who don't know about this race, Greg Biffle went winless, I think, for a little over, almost two seasons, so almost two full seasons. Uh, maybe a little, even a little longer. And uh, this was his first win in the was it his first win in the COT? I don't remember if it's the first win in the COT car. But um, I, I like these older cars that came with the pins. Number 16, Pocono, 8, 1, 10. So I got this car. The reason I told you kind of the story about the McDowell win car is because I got alerted that this car showed up at the house. Yesterday, I went to go pick up my daughter, come back home. I was really excited. I asked my fiance, hey, did I get a package? No. I'm like, hey, did I get a package? No. I'm like, oh, sketchy. Not again. I can't lose two die casts in a row. She said I didn't get it. She checked the porch, didn't get it. Get really nervous. And I was going to text her mom, who stays and babysits my stepson, and... She said her mom left her phone here. I'm like, oh man. I went outside. I looked on the porch again. I looked around the porch. I looked at some of the neighbor's porches. Nothing. So I came downstairs just in case. And it was sitting on the table. So I was really happy about that. So I did pop it open. Took The guy did a very good job. Boxed it properly. Taped it properly. Got it on eBay. Um, he, actually, he actually taped the styrofoam back closed. So, here we go. For those of you guys who really don't know, I absolutely love Raced Wind diecast. This is what I collect. I've got, as you can see, a couple non-Raced Wind cars. I've got, you guys have seen some of the collection. But vast majority of what I have is Raced Wind. I don't have, I've got one COT. It's the Kyle Busch Daytona win. Oh, no, but take that back. I got two. I got the Carl Edwards uh, Fontana win. I believe that was 2008. So those two are the oldest die casts I have. This is now the third oldest die cast that I have. Damn, I'm slow. Never mind. I've got older ones than that. I've got Gen 4 cars. <laughs> so anyways, the Biffle car, really, really good looking race car. Here, let's adjust this, get you guys a little closer view. So, a lot of the rubber buildup and the dirt buildup on the hood. You can kind of see some of the scuffing from the, from the wall on the side. It does have a minor imperfection, a little rub right up on the roof flap here just to the other side of it 
still a lot of like rubber dirt build up on it. I love the dirt and rubber build up. Looks great on white race cars. So let's get it taken off. Move the ring so I don't scratch the car. That screwdriver's too big. This one should be good. Oh, that one ain't working. Let me grab my standard screwdriver. Nope, that's not it. Where's my screwdriver? I think one of you guys might have jacked my screwdriver. Ah! It's right where I don't put things. If you do hear a little background noise, the uh, furnace is about to kick in. It is... 10 degrees outside right now, up here in Michigan. Not enough. There we go. There we go. Perfect. All right. So, again, beautiful race car. This is the first time I've actually taken it out of the box, as you can tell. But, uh, yep, little chip here behind the wheel. Just a little tiny one. All the way around it, the splitter and the splitter supports are act fully on there. I love the old detail of these older die casts. I mean, the detail is so much better. along the side again the scraping from the wall contact the trunks actually opened back then you can see inside but this is nearly a perfect die cast there's a little bit of a chip on the bumper right here on the corner and just an imperfection in the three from the 3m on the 3M, sorry. And I mean, it just blows me away the, the quality of the die cast back then in terms of detail and everything. Obviously, you get the big old spoiler after they went from the big original COT spoilers. But yeah, so for those of you who can't really, don't know if you can really tell, ah, yep, you can kind of see that white line right there. That's the imperfection. But other than that, it's a beautiful race car. Super excited, super happy to add that to the collection. And thanks to the, uh, the seller, I will link them in the comments, or I'm sorry, the uh, description section below. Thanks for watching, guys.